paper because tonight we're going to be talking about the 5-1. Now, eons ago, back when Carla was a young thing uh, and I was a young thing, um, the way that we built this business was on the back of something called the 5-1. So obviously you guys all know that we have now put the 5-1 in place, well not we, but head office has put the 5-1 in place again for October, November and December. Now I'm, I'm kind of keen if anyone can just enlighten me as to why they think they might have actually done that. <laughs> do they think, do you think, oh, you know, it's just time to reintroduce the five one. Has anyone got any thoughts around why? Because it's a very clever move on behalf of head office to reintroduce the five one. So if you've got a theory, just drop it in the chat box here. But the five one is five new customer orders. So an ARO. So as long as you've got five different AROs, then you've got your five customers and one franchisee with an order who's not your husband or your partner who lives in the same house as you. So that is the five one. And for decades, so nobody's got any thoughts. Has anybody actually stopped and thought why they might be doing five one? Um, I'll come back to it in a second. But for eons, um, we build our business. Now, Carla, I thought you might like to just drop in the chat section how many months, because I think you've been a bit of a legend with doing five ones. How many months in a row did you do five one? Yep, Angel Boost customers, Mel. Yep, for the family healthy stars. Oh, look, that's, that's a possibility. But why this time of year? Why October, November and December, do you think? Because they could have started it straight after conference if it was for the healthy starts. Six months in a row. Wow, that's pretty good. Inspire a million families. Yeah, that's not bad. Ah, ah, Christmas. It's coming up to Christmas. Caitlin, good thinking. Debt-free Christmas. People wanting dollars for Christmas. Momentum to the new year. Yeah. So one of the most difficult times in our business is actually over the Christmas, um, December and January period. Does anyone find that anyone who's been in our business a couple of years, you'll find that a lot of momentum is lost over December and January. Um, partly because we sort of say, well, you know, people want to spend their money on Christmas gifts or they want to save a bit of cash or, you know, they don't want to commit to their health for, for December because, you know, it's kind of been thrown out the window with the silly season. And what often happens is you're absolutely right in that momentum is often lost. And the thing about momentum is that has a flow on effect. So the momentum's not only lost in December and January, but it's also often lost in February into March as well. So having an incentive like this at this time of the year is key for a number of things, including maintaining momentum for your business through what is what could be quite a, a difficult year, a difficult time of year. And what I love about something like this is that it has made all of us really step up and start to come up with solutions as to how we can get our customers, how we can be talking to people about Juice Plus the products, but also Juice Plus the business. And while we're going through this tonight, I want you to be dropping into the chat box here um, some of the, the ways that you might have been talking to uh, people about the product at this time of year and how you might have been talking to people about the business at this time of year that has helped you to secure um, customers and also franchisees because that's going to help everybody if you're dropping those in. So we obviously know that we have the company incentive, the 5-1 for October, November and December and there is an increasing amount of money that you can earn with each month as you go. So to those who made their October bonus, congratulations, extra hundred bucks. Um, you now have the opportunity to earn more in November if you do it in November, and then again more if you do it in December. Now that doesn't stop. If someone didn't achieve it in October, you still get the opportunity to start at $100 in November and then increase the bonus again in December. And even if you don't get October or November, you've still got the opportunity to, um, to earn bonus in December. So guys, don't give up. <laughs> Start to look at the chat box at all the, the reasons that you can be talking to people about the product or the business and continue to move your momentum of your business forward. So 
Um, I just want to give a massive shout out to Carla who did this on a live on her team page. And, and this is off the back of um, Adam actually sharing this um, at the game plan recently. But I want you to think about what five customers per month is going to look like to your business or even your brand new franchisee that has just come in, has just spent their, hundred, their last $165 to join this business. In addition to the bonus that the company is going to give them, what that is going to look like for their business. So if we look at five customers on the premium, so that works out to be $61 in retail. So remember the three ways we generate money. So 61, 61, 61, 61, 61. Okay. Just those five. And remember, first time customer, get your retail, retail profit up front. That's 305 smackaroonies that you can use for Christmas. Think about that. So you've got a brand new team member. They've just spent 165. That's going to cover the cost or it could help go towards a Christmas gift or even to pay off that credit card. Now, let's say you have a team member that's been in the business a while. They might be at DVF. They might be at SDVF or they might even be at sales coordinator. Now, let's look at that percentage commission in addition to the retail profit. So an additional $3.71. So what's that? That's an additional 18, let's just call it $20, just to round it up. If they're at SDVF, that's an additional $8.34 per order. So that takes them up to an additional $40-ish, plus or minus. If they're a sales coordinator, that's a big $12.98 in their percent commission. So that gets them an additional 65, all right? That money starts to add up. And that, that is just in one five. Okay, imagine if you did that three months running, what a boost to your check that is going to be 300, 300, 300. But here's the additional way to think about this. And this is what I really love. 15 orders, right, over three months at $92.75, sorry, 92.75 installment points, 15 orders towards your 1800 PVC. So remember, we all need to get 1800 to personally qualify our businesses. That gives you approximately 1391 points towards qualifying your business. Mm -hmm. Now, on average, most people have about four or five customers. So if you're adding those new 15 customers to your already half a dozen customers you might have, that just in that three months of frenetic activity that you're doing towards the end of the year, you've got a qualified business and you've got a qualified business on installment that is going to qualify you every single month. You don't need to be scrambling. So can you see that there is an additional benefit to you working this 5-1 over October, November, December, or in the case of our boat trip, um, what is it? November, December and January. So you've got, and you've got that momentum. Now, what does that 15 people mean to your business? 15 orders. Doesn't matter whether they're premium, whether they're complete, whether they're um, healthy starts, doesn't matter what sort of customer, but that's 15 people that you can upsell product to, that you can just love all over them, show them the Amiga videos, you know, show them the, the uh, Shred 10 or, or Detox 10, whatever your program is, and you can bring them into the community and add additional products to their orders. So that's the upsell. You also have 15 new raving fans. Again, if you love all over them and add them to whichever program you use, and they are people that are going to be your referral basis. They are people that are going to refer you to their husbands, to their grandparents, to their best friends, uh, to the school mums. They are people, that is your new referral network, a brand new network for you to utilise. And most importantly, they are your potential business partners. So this is where you are going to build your momentum into 2019 by having 15 people who you're going to have the opportunity to talk to about the business. 
And what a fantastic thing to talk about in January because two of the most common things people talk about when they make their New Year's resolutions is their health, getting their health back on track and getting their financial future in order, creating more income, um, you know, working hard towards some sort of outcome for 2019, which has got to do with financial freedom. So you have the opportunity to talk to these people about their business opportunity. Now, that's just the customers. That's just the five. So even if you haven't actually done your five one last month or this month, have no fear because the people that you have put on are still going to give you that opportunity. But what about, what about those franchisees that come on board as well as part of your five one? So you've got new team that you are going to be building. So if you've got one in October, and of course you're gonna try and move them to their DVF, aren't you? Because you want them to get their $100 bonus in the first 10 days. So that's one person that you're gonna to start towards their fast track SDVF in November, yeah? What about that one person you might do in November? Well, that's somebody who you're gonna to move towards their SDVF fast track in December, right? And here's the great one, that person in December, in often what is deemed to be the lowest activity month, you're going to move towards their SDBF in January. And with how we're running the Shred 10s and the Detox 10 programs now, you know, starting them off on the, the first Monday of the month, what have we got in January, the 7th of January, brilliant. Straight after Christmas, when they've got big fat tummies and they've drunk too much, you pick up the phone, you lock them into their detox or their uh, shred 10 for the 7th of January, you get those orders in by the end of December <laughs> and you will have done um, your 5-1 there as well. So guys, what this gives you is three lines, three lines that you are going to help build into your future. Now, the thing that we know about this business is that it's all about going wide. It's all about getting your structure wide. Too many of us have one-legged wonders. So the greatest thing that you can do is have three people who are building together towards their SDVF by using whatever program that you have. So this 5-1 incentive, this, this absolute brain, this, this absolutely brilliant program, I can't even think of the words, that has been created by head office in October, November, December, or even the incentive for Ignite in November, December and January, you must be jumping on top of because this is your opportunity to catapult your business forward into 2019. It's the work you do for 5-1 over these months that is going to give you the momentum into 2019. Now, there's a couple of people on here who have really taken advantage of this 5-1. Now, I won't say that they necessarily started on the 1st of October. Remember the work when... What's that saying? The work you do on your summer body is done in winter. <laughs> the same thing with this business. The work that is being done for October, November, December was for a good period of time being done um, in the months preceding that. But one person I really want to um, acknowledge is Sarah Zamet, who has consistently been um, growing her business and has managed to smash her 5 1 for October and November. Sarah, tell us a little bit about, I'm just going to unmute you. Tell you us a little about what you've been doing um that's a really good question tomorrow because when you <laughs> when you asked me to speak i was thinking oh my god what am i doing um look again there is no secret sauce um it really is what i've been doing over the last six months i would say um most of you know I do the Simon Chan DMO, so I do that Monday to Friday regardless of what's going on. I never get attached to the outcome, so I literally just do my DMO, put it to the side, go off and do what I need to do. Um, I would say a lot of my momentum this month has actually come with a lot of ease and flow. I've got a lot of US, USA customers and what I have found is because they are already on the product, they might be, say, just on the fruit and veg or maybe they've got just the complete or, or whatever they've ordered, because I've sent them my link 
to order because they're in the US. Um, what I'm finding is quite often I'm waking up to they've placed an Amiga order or I'm waking up to they've placed a complete order and I don't even know about it until I get that little email. Um, you know, I had a couple of ladies reach out to me today. I had some messages in my inbox just saying, hey, Sarah, I want to order the shoes. And I'm like, oh, my God, where did these people come from? They are just people that maybe four months ago I've connected with and sent some information and then the, they've been watching me on my Facebook, they've been watching my stories and the timing's right. So the only, the, the things that I really just want to point out, and I know everyone else is going to say the same thing, it's just consistency. It really is. Um, I would also say probably the last few months or um, maybe the last six months since I've been doing the Simon Chan DMO is I've gotten out of that place of desperation, um, which has made me a lot happier within myself, if that makes sense. So all I really focus in on is what I'm doing today. So my DMO today, okay, that's all I focus on each and every day. I don't focus on whether an order is going to come through. I don't focus on whether someone's going to join my team that's what I focus on. And I'm just finding that that's having a role on effect. It really is. Um, the other thing, yeah, the, 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 the big thing as well is not overthinking it. So for example, today I was just on Facebook and I saw this lady, she, it's in a group that I'm in, but this lady was going on about her poor daughter and I never overthink, oh, my God, should I reach out to her? What is she going to think? Is she going to think I'm selling something? I genuinely just reached out to her about her daughter, and she was more than happy uh, to help. She's actually in Sweden, and she's like, I'm getting this. So just don't overthink it. Like, if you want to help someone, just don't overthink what you're going to say. Just reach out. It doesn't matter if they don't want your help. Um, and I guess it's just, yeah. So at this time of year, are you getting some of those hesitations and objections like, oh, I've got to save my money for Christmas or, oh, you know, we're coming into the silly season and, you know, I can't think about that now. Are you getting any of that and how are you dealing with it? No, I'm not. Um, no, I'm, to be honest, I'm not. But again, I'm just finding at the moment, this is just an effect of what I've done over the last six months, this month particularly and last month has been more people actually coming to me from the work that I've done over the last six months than me having to really kind of, well, I don't like to push it on, but but do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you're doing the work. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just planting the seeds, doing the work, having the conversations, having fun with finding out what people are up to and being curious about them and just not... Do you know what I have done? And this is going to sound so counter, no, counterproductive, counterintuitive. I don't know what the word is. Um, but I really, even though I treat it like a business by doing my DMO, I've actually taken it less seriously. Yeah. As in, I think about, you know, I don't, and I don't, or I was going out and about and seeing everyone as a prospect and I really just don't, I don't feel that anymore and I don't see that anymore. If I feel like I need to bring it up, I will. And if I don't, I won't. But it's really working for me because I'm just not overthinking it. Yeah, that's great. And probably because you've got so much business coming in, you don't need to go and feel like, <laughs> like you said, you've stepped out of uh, desperation. Yeah. 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 Love that. That's fabulous. And look, to those of you who think, oh, well, I haven't been doing this for the last six months, don't use that as your excuse put start to do the work that sarah is doing has been doing start to do it now and use november december and january as your momentum kick into the rest of the year so guys now is not the time for using excuses it is not pens down i always say to people that christmas is just one day you know we, the shops don't shut until christmas eve doctor surgeries don't shut until christmas eve banks don't shut so why should we shut 
there's absolutely no reason for us to be shutting down except for those public holidays where we just get to enjoy our families and also get to enjoy the fruits of all of our labours that we've put in. So, Sarah, thanks so much for sharing. That was really insightful. I'd love to bring Carla on now as well because... You know, Carla's got a lot of stuff going on. She's building a lot of teams. She could sit very happily in management mode right now, but she's not. She's actively building in her five ones. So, Carla, can I get you to unmute yourself? And can you just talk about perhaps some of the discussions that you're having at this time of year and how you're still really focusing on your five one, despite the fact that you're, you know, you're an NMD and you're a, a, a leader? Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> so I think one of the biggest things oh, I was ever sort of really taught and continued, I'm sure all of you have heard this before, is that, you know, it's doing the do and people follow your actions, not your words. So it's not about, you know, micromanaging anyway. And I think if you forget what it's like to be out there and do the work, it's very hard to then coach or help other people, much like Tam, why you're able to show this tonight, why you're doing the five one, pure example. So um, for me, I think it's always been about out, being out there and, and staying in the game. But um, also to exactly, I think Sarah Pim pointed it really right. I mean, I'm, I've got my consistent DMO. I always have, no matter what. I don't think I'm above not needing to, to put time into this business. So it is having my minimum requirements of conversations every day and follow-ups, um, creating meetings, looking for those opportunities, connecting with people in groups, you know, whether that's just wishing someone a happy birthday and then asking, you know, what are you doing today? How's life? And that leads into conversations. I feel like there are actually conversations everywhere if we just want to look and find the opportunities rather than waiting. You know, and I think that's a big thing quite often we can do. We're waiting for everything to come to us versus creating those opportunities. So that's what I do. I create opportunities every single day for myself. But again, as Sarah said, I don't base every day or I try not to. I have those moments. I think we all do. But it's not about am I going to get an order through that day necessarily or a team me that day. It's just what do I need to accomplish today to know I've made progress and I'm moving forward. And if I do that every day, as you said, what eventually happens is that work comes to fruition and a conversation will lead to an order or someone will randomly come at you and say, okay, what is this? What do I know about the business? You know, even if it seems to have come from nowhere. So I think that's just it. have your DMO every day, stick to it, work to the minimum, not just what you decide to do today. Whatever you decide your minimum every day to do, no matter what, you have to do that minimum. Like it's as simple as that. Um, and I think that's always been it for me. I just don't let excuses get in the way. I just I was up from 4 a.m. this morning. I just got home from Bali. I haven't slept. I'm tired too. I literally got home unpacked, was doing work, and then I'm on calls tonight. I could have easily not done that. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, no, that's part of my DMO, so I'm here. Simple. Yeah. Same with the girls last week who got back from the UK. So it's just not having an excuse. And 5-1, if you literally work every single day and do that, then it doesn't become so difficult as long as you're doing it every day versus like the last week of the month. Yeah, exactly, which is fairly typical of humanity to leave things till the last moment. Carla, mm. have you had any sort of hesitations or objections around this end of the year from product or business and how have you dealt with it? Oh, God, yeah. I don't think anyone doesn't get, like, objections no matter where you are. I think I've just really learned to ask more questions and figure out if their first response is the real response or whether that's just sort of the surface response. And then dig a little deeper to see if they're open to exploring whatever their, their challenge or their rejection is. Um, and quite often it's just people make an assumption over how costly everything is or they think if they looked at one price of, you know, an order, that's all they can start with versus I always go back down to even the minimum cost of an order. Can you start with that um, and explore that first? Um, and then I think, same with the business. I mean, the biggest one I get is I'd rather be on the, the product for a little while. And to be honest, sometimes I've got to roll with that because I get it sometimes too. I'm like, and then I have to think, do you want them on your team now for you or for them? Is it right for them? Um, but again, I think if someone's not ready now, if I've been doing the do every day and every month, there's someone from two, three months ago who is going to be ready now. So it's not necessarily the people you have the conversation with at that month. 
Um, so you don't get desperate as Sarah said with those particular conversations like, no, but I need a TV now. I must do it this month. You think, okay, I'll work and I'll plan till that. And I'm probably like 80 to 90% warm with somebody I kicked the conversation off with months back. I don't know if that helps at all, but I think it just, it goes down to the consistency. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But if you, but the same thing too, I think, I think ask questions and explore. I think quite often we just take the first response and just go, Okay, they said no, but did you find out why? Did you ask more yeah, questions? Or, or, they, are, they are they open to more education? Like, do they know everything is yet? You know, like really making sure you've kind of dug a bit deeper. Yeah, or, you know, I don't have the money because I've got all these Christmas gifts that I've got to buy. Or, you know, or, you know what if I could help you generate some cash that will be able to help you purchase those Christmas gifts? So, Find yeah. their pain. Find the pain and find, find a way to link how this could solve their problem. That's simple. Yeah, love that. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. The other person I really would love um, to share is Anika. I don't know if you're there. I see your beautiful picture. Um, so Anika also did her 5-1 in October um, and is on track for November. I'm not sure, Next, if you're there. Has anyone else done their 5 I am here. Sorry. Oh. I've got, I had the thermomix going in the background, so I had to turn that off <laughs> there. <laughs> Multitasking. So it's so not so loud. Done, um, Apologies for not having my video on. Yeah, that's okay. You've done your 5-1. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you did that? Yeah, um, I was actually just thinking about it um, this morning, and I think, yeah, it is definitely, um, as Sarah and Carla Said, the consistency makes a massive difference um, but I think as well um, I just started doing the shred 10 as well and that is just such an e easy quick way to get some really good customers on board and um, and even just with your current customer base as well because it's um, a, a lot of the shred 10 people were actually already my capsule customers um, and some of them already on the complete or weren't on the complete but wanted to try it so it was a really good way of getting them to extend out into the other products that we do um, and so I think the shred 10 played a played a big part of that and um, certainly mid December we plugging that again for beginning of Jan because um, I think at, you know, if you haven't been building consistently um, you know, and doing your DMO every day, then that's kind of like a quick hack that you can sort of get into and quickly do and, and get those numbers up so that you can get those bonuses in. Yeah, that's exactly true. And, you know, you've got the ability, if, if people don't know, you've got the ability on your virtual offers to go into an upfront payment and order a box of 30 um, of either the chocolate or the vanilla. That's an ARO. And that's an upfront, so that's all your retail profit and all your points right there. And a box of 30 is going to get them through their 10 days of their shred, plus it's going to see them out towards the end of the month as well. And I'm actually going back to my shred 10 um, clients at the end of the shred 10 and saying, hey, did you love it? Was it fabulous? Shall we do it again? Let's bring your next shred 10. Let's bring your next uh, auto ship forward uh, for next month. So yeah, it's really good. So thanks so much for sharing, Anika. So guys, we've come to the end of the half hour. Um, hopefully you've got some great tips and tricks there. Um, you know, the sorts of things, particularly with Shred 10, I mean, we've got it starting again on the 7th of January. The next one starts actually on the 3rd of December. I've had a lot of pushback from people sort of saying, oh, you know, it's December, it's the silly season and so on. Um, and often my, my sort of logic with that is, look, I've completely understand where you're at and you've got a couple of Christmas parties, but if you can do 10 days around those Christmas parties, you're going to hit Christmas feeling so much happier and healthier and it's going to be so much easier for you to, to launch into 2019 with your health goals. And um, I've actually still had a lot of people come on board with the shred for December and, of course, you know, we're building big for a New Year's resolution uh, shred 
<laughs> after Christmas. So, you know, think about and brainstorm some ideas on, on how you can do that for December. But guys, slam dunk the 5-1. You can see from the numbers how much it's going to build momentum for your business uh, into 2019. If there's, if there's one message that you take away from all three of these girls tonight, and that is this is a momentum business. So it's the work that you're going to be doing now, December and January, that is going to kick you right through the first half of 2019. Thanks guys so much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate um, everybody's share. Hopefully there's some great ideas. Reach out to your upline, your sideline. We've still got a couple more days of November. Anything can happen towards the end of the month. See what you can do. And I'm hoping you get your spot on the boat for Ignite. See you guys. Thanks so much.